Welcome everyone, my name is Paula Phillips, also known as General Artista, and I thought I'd jump on for a quick minute uh, or two and uh, start using some of these um, challenging stencils. When I first started stenciling or art journaling, that type of thing, five years ago, you know, it wasn't that, you know, Crafters Workshop was making stencils that are more for journaling and scrapbooking, and the other options were, you know, airbrush stencils that cost an arm and a leg. But I found this book, Stencil 101 by Ed Roth, in the bookstore. And I know he has a 102 or whatever uh, as well. And, and so I got it. It does have some interesting uh, stencils, shall we say. You know, so I, I was challenged. I know some of the other girls have these type of um, books and don't really know how to use some of the crazy stencils. Uh, well, the bird's not so crazy, that's for sure. Um, but, you know, a cars, gladiator mask, or whatever that is, uh, a poodle, like that's kind of strange. So, you know, I did use them a couple of years ago when I first started art journaling, and uh, then I, you know, once once some of these other companies started producing more, then I kind of put that off to the wayside. So I thought I'd come on and, and show you how to take some of your backgrounds that maybe you've used other stencils to create or, you know, don't can't find a perfect image. And, uh, and let's challenge you to use some of these things. So I've got a sumo wrestler and I have this background that's multiple layers of, I don't know what, I, I probably didn't like it. I covered it. Um, and getting a there's lots lots going on there I even had some pattern tape so you know that we got blacks reds golds there's already too much black on here so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do them black but I think I may uh, let me do like a cream color and if you do a cream color you can always color a little bit later but when I have a stencil that's a thing and not a background you know, or not uh, some type of geometric pattern. Well, this is a person, but you know, it, it's not <clears throat> it's not so conducive for a background. Although we could do it, but it's like a main image, right? So I'll flip through some of these. You know, we talked before about my process. Uh, some pages are finished, some not. I just jump back and forth, and I leave lots of pages uh, ninety eight percent done. Of course, now I can't find one because oh, for example, here's a. So I found this, I got this journal out and I thought, okay, this is perfect. I got a sumo wrestler and I'm going to write, bring it. You want to, you want to fight? I mean, no, <laughs> that sounded bad. That's not what I really mean, but I am going to title it, bring it. Cause that's just kind of what's speaking to me at the moment. So I'm literally, literally, I don't know why that makes sense. Why I said that. I am just going to use, I'm going to use some antique white maybe, which is a creamish color. I hope my phone's not going to start dinging all over there, everywhere. Um, all right. So this is just some craft paint and I'm going to push it through this stencil. So I, again, I like to use these stencils as last layers, you know, or what I call finishing finishing layers so I'm just going to take a, a makeup wedge and I know I've got some flash going on I saw someone the other day I mean everybody has their own style right but I saw somebody the other day use the side of the makeup wedge um, to go through a stencil and my experience you know you can do what what is the most comfortable for you but in, and then she was having a lot of problems get because she had too much paint you know on it but the thing is when you're stenciling if you stencil it on this side on the thin side of your makeup wedge right what's gonna happen when you push it down your finger I can't see anything there your finger is gonna hit the page you know what I mean and therefore creating more pressure therefore releasing more paint from your sponge I hope that made sense. So, hi, Mickey. So, if you hold your sponge, you know, on, oh, I'm not even in the camera, on the angle, what now when I, and I already have paint on here, of course, but now when I sponge, see, my fingers aren't creating more pressure 
than if I were to do it that way. If you do it this way, your finger's going to pop through and therefore cause more paint in that one particular area. So that's just a tip. I didn't tell the person that I saw doing it that tip, but it's just something to think about. Um, with, and I thought it was important. Sometimes I forget that if I'm using a tool, which this happens to be a makeup wedge, I forget to explain why I'm using it and how exactly I'm using it to get the best results. So I'm going to try to do that a little bit more often. All right, so we got some paint on the makeup wedge. I spounced it off there a little bit. And remember that uh, you don't want your makeup wedge or sponge or whatever you use, you're using to be wet before you put the paint on it because then for sure you will have Uh, seepage underneath the stencil. Just taking a quick peek at the chat. Hi, Elaine. Hope I said hello. And Dana. I hope that makes sense of what I was trying to say about the makeup wedge. Um, I just want to. I, I keep I keep needing to remind myself uh, to share those little tips with you because you know it could be frustrating. I want you to, I want you to learn and be inspired from me. But at the same time, I don't want you to go home and try a technique. Or I shouldn't say go home because you're with me. You're already at home. <laughs> but I don't want you to try a technique and then say, "Oh my goodness, it didn't turn out like Paula did it." What am I? You know? Oh, I'll never. I can't. I can't art journal. I can't do this. No, not true. So I'll try to remember and share a few more of those things, those little things every time. Because really, it's the little things that make that make the difference, right? All right. So I still like. Oops. Maybe I should back out. I'm I'm going off the camera every once in a while. They were reduced pictures of big things. Yeah, it's by, uh, what's his name again? Ed Roth, Stencil 101, it's called. You can buy it at the bookstore or at a bookstore. Uh, backed out one. I've got a Didi inspired shirt on today. <laughs> okay. So I, I usually do things in threes, right? But if I did this, all I would see is his, his legs peeking out. That's kind of strange, right? So maybe I'll just put the last guy over here and we'll just have his uh, head looking. So after, I'm going to let this dry a little bit a little bit. I've got the other one, but normally once I get to this stage, after it's dry, I will go and take one of my big pens. Uh, oh boy, oh boy. Well, this one's blue, but I would usually go over with black, especially the only one I have here. I really like, oh, you know what? Let's try. Let's try one of those new 1.6 pencil pens that I got. Uh, these Maxim pens, cheap ones I got from Staples. Let's, let's find the black one. I find I would like I like to outline things uh, in the black. So let me let me dry this first, and then we can. Hey, gun. Yeah, you gotta try more than once. That's for sure, Jane. Don't give up. You know you have to try different methods too just because I do it one way and works for me doesn't mean it'll work that same way for everybody but uh, when I show a technique when I show a trick right I try to explain why something won't work so that um, or why it won't work as well I guess it's the right word you can try it out you can and figure out what works 
for you. All right, I just want to make sure I don't clean my stencils. This one doesn't really, especially if this one's paper. But I'm going to use a pen, and I don't want any paint to go into my pen. So if I'm outlining something, I mean, you can sit here. I could sit here and make sure I got some. And start going around doing freehand. You don't have to use a ballpoint pen. It's just what I like. You don't have to do this at all. Right? I can go around and do it freehand, or you can center your stencil or replace your stencil where it was, where it's close as mine, and then go around the stencil. But you gotta be real careful because uh, so that your stencil doesn't lift up while you're tracing it. So I'm not going to go on. But what's going to happen, I'm not going to do the whole thing because I want to go on to the next page. But what's going to happen is then you'll, it'll pop out a little bit from the page. And I might go back and color this guy with chalk. You know, I used a cream craft paint, so I left it pretty neutral. Maybe I'll leave it in cream. I don't know. But it'll take it'll take me a while to trace. I do like to do it freehand though afterwards because for me, I think it it helps me practice. When your hand, you know, I believe in muscle memory, whether it's in. Uh, fitness you know or drawing so sometimes even tracing things helps you helps your uh, fine motor skills especially for someone like me who has some pretty shaky hands so what I'll do I so at this point you know I got the three guys and I have this big open area now that I can write uh, a title or song lyrics. That's how I like to art journal. I like to have maybe it's left over on my scrapbooker days, but I like titles. I like quotes. I like sayings, something like that. Um, so when I say title, it could be a quote, right? But um, I like bring it. I think it's perfect. I can put the bring and then it here. Maybe I'll get it some foam stamps later. But it'll be fun to fun to gussy that guy up. So I'm going to, let's go on to this one though. Um, I just want to show you one way where you, if you have these weird images that are things or people, use them on the top. But you can also use them in middle layers to create your background as well. This is a security camera, not a security camera. It's more like one of those old, what do they, what were those ones called? Darn it. Simon's in the shower. He would know what it was. You know, those old handheld ones. Hi, Sandy. Yep, I keep trying. I keep trying. Okay, so I'm going to start stenciling this a little bit here and there. Let's create some background. So, as you guys know, I'm practicing using my color wheel and, and um, not just using color spontaneously, but trying to learn. So let's get out this bad boy. And... Well, I guess the main color now we have blue, we have greens and, uh, well, let's go, maybe we'll go to this one. Eight millimeter super, a uh, super eight? So that sounds about right. The ones that have, yeah, like that hold. All right, so we do have, purple's definitely the main color. Or violet in this case. And so the split complementary is yellow green, which I do have some greenish kind of things going on. And uh, yellow orange. So I got purple, green. So if we add some yellow orange to this, uh, these cameras, yellow orange, then we should be good. Right? We just want an orange that's kind of similar, similar in that. Let's see. Orange twist. Let's try it. And I'm just grabbing for the craft paints, guys, because they're the closest to me here. It doesn't. Uh, you can use whatever paint you prefer in your art journal.
So yesterday, when I played around with the chat, for some reason I pressed the arrow or the scroll bar on the side, and then all of a sudden it said one new message, two new me So I X'd it out and, and got the pop-out chat again, and then it seemed to be fine. And if anybody's watching, I did notice today while I was uploading, there's, if you look at the top of your chat box, you'll see social stream and chat. You always want, if you want to talk to me or talk to the other wonderful ladies that are in the class, you need, or in the chat, excuse me, you need to click on the top, top of the box there, it says chat. I know that in a couple of the ladies have been chatting over on the social stream and not in the right section. So we don't see you guys if you're on the social stream part of it. All right, let's see. So I got a main image over here. Oh, I think I'm going to put them like that. And you could use spray. Like I could have used sprays at this point if I wanted to. Um, but you got to read, maybe, well, maybe not at this point because you'd have to have a pretty opaque spray to go over these colors. Unless you were planning on going over, going over with a lighter color or gesso or something. You know, that, that'll make the color pop back out. But, all right. So I'm just going to start going here. So already I can tell that, that that is probably too light of an orange. So let's add some cadmium orange to this, see what happens. It has something to do, I only started, anyway, yeah, it is taking all the fun. I think that they're working it out, as Carrie said, you know. They've got to keep jobs too, so <laughs> they'll work it out soon. I apologize for anybody that's having problems. I know it's frustrating. What I do is always pop out the chat and then automatically, um, but I never touch the scroll bar, and for some reason that's what. That's what did it to me yesterday. I moved the scroll bar up a little bit and that was it. But thank you, Ustream. I can now see the people that are in the chat. Welcome, Amelia Jackson. See, look. Jeannie Klausman. Hey, Klausman. Hey, Barb, if you're, if you're there too. Harriet, Carrie, Linda, Lucy, I love it. Now I can see what's going on over here. So I'm, I am happy. Die, hi, die, hi, Joyce H. So, uh oh, somebody probably just left because I said that. But anyways, I do like that. I'm working out the bugs. You know, if you're around Ustream any, any length of time, I mean, we've been through it all, right? It just, uh, that's the way it goes. And nobody ever likes change, no matter what it is. No matter, uh oh. So, I didn't get a very good image over here. As you can see, my uh, sponge was a little too wet. A little too wet already with the white. So, all I'm going to do. So, I, see how you have, this is the back. And it's, it's seeped underneath. So I do wipe it off a little bit. You know, you don't want to start, if it's if it's seeped underneath the stencil, I don't want to put the stencil down and do the same thing all over again, right? So you got to make sure you just wipe it off a little bit. And then this time I will get a brand new baby, baby wipes, excuse me, makeup sponge. Who's, who's got type of, I, I won't, I won't ask. I'm trying, I'm just looking at this and, and thinking, because after I clean that off, right, I just realized, oh, no problem. Thank you, uh, AJ, I appreciate you being here. Sorry if I, uh, 
I apologize to anybody in advance. If I say your name wrong, spell your name wrong, I try real hard to remember everybody. So, um, so I apologize for that. Okay, but after I clean it, I'm thinking, oh, look, now I can, maybe I want to overlap it and have the cameras go the other way as well. Because, you know, the message of you never know who's watching, could you know, they could be coming from all angles, right? Not just pointing one way. So let me just put this to the side for a second. And these, like I said, these stencils are plastic coated paper. I don't, I mean, unless you really like the designs, I'm not necessarily the biggest fan. In fact, if there's one that you must have that I'd be happy to send you because um, obviously I haven't used these in about five years. But, <clears throat> whoops. Okay, so I do like that. So I've got that clean now on both sides. And so now I can go this way. And you know, you know what I mean? I like to hang things off the edge. It's not bad if you put it um, somewhere in the middle, but I just like it. I, I think it was Julie Fay Van Balzer that once said, I'm, I don't think I know you know, she was, she was doing a live view stream years ago and she said, you know, you got to think of it. You got to make the viewer think beyond the page, make it look like it was a, a part of fabric or, or something that goes beyond. And I really liked how she explained it. So one thing I do, if I have a collage image, so I got this little watch here and it's got a little yoga girl there doing the tree pose. <laughs> um, so what I also like to do is overlap. I like to make sure I overlap a collage piece of the original piece I've got going on. I'm just a, I don't know what you guys are talking about. Oh, it protects your hands from the foam, from the paint and things. Oh, so if you're using like preparation H, <laughs> I can buy some preparation H to put on my hands so I don't get paint on them. I promise that's what it's for. <laughs> okay, now I did all that. I got a new wedge, and here I am picking up that other one again. All right. You just get a much crisper image when you're using a dry, a dry sponge or makeup wedge or spouncer or whatever you're using. So I'm so excited to see my nieces in a few hours. They just got back from Florida. Hear the, all the stories about their first trip to Disney. See their autograph books. I've never been to Disney myself. I was, you know, uh, very lucky when I worked. Uh, we had a conference in Orlando. And I was able to go to downtown Disney, and we went to Universal. Um, we went to Universal Haunted Horror Nights. That was awesome. But I've never, I never been to the actual, you know, actual Disney. So that was Simon sneezing in the background. If you could hear it. All right. And like I said, I just, I just want to add that third one over here. Yeah, I've heard that. Preparation H under your eyes. I've read that before. More than once, I think. And we're going to have some... We're having a belated Thanksgiving dinner, so I'm really excited about that. All right, put this off to the side. And I've got all this extra paint. You know me, I can't... I can't have all this extra paint and not do anything with it, so... I'm just going to grab the nearest uh, leftover journal. I did, uh, so if you remember my page from the the other day, um, I don't know where it is at this exact moment. Uh, Carrie, Carrie reminded me about stamping on tissue paper, but, well, this was actually a white napkin. But then she reminded me that you can actually flip them once you stamp. You can glue it down the other way to get a rubber stamp a rubber stamped image the opposite you know if you need to hit this guy I wanted looking the other way 
but I stamped them twice and the first one was a little bit too smudgy, if you remember, but it came out perfect. No, my mom is, my mom is, ha not tonight, uh, my stepfather's coming to pick us up at one o'clock. So I've got mirror. Thanks, Carrie. So you get the mirror image. Uh, so I, I got another hour. So my mom's cooking, cooking turkey because my sister, my sister was, uh, I'm wake up second. my sister was away for Thanksgiving. I'm not sure if I'm going to use some wedges. I'll use those wedges or not. Probably not, but I'm going to pick this up. And I ran out of cream, so I'm drinking my coffee with almond milk. And you know, I drink lots of almond milk, at least two, probably two cups a day. And, uh, but I just don't, you know, it's nutty. I, and I drink it all the time in my protein shakes and, but you know, for coffee, I still drink cream, 10% cream. I put in a tablespoon or two. So it's, to me, it tastes very nutty right now. All right. I had some crusties on this, on this gift card. Okay. So it's not much, right? But it's a little something that may help out this page in a, you know, in a later time. Let me just wipe this off. Uh oh, Angela. What time is it? 12 o'clock. Yeah, you can stamp on acrylic block and then stamp the block for a mirror image. Somewhere I also have a stamp, a plain rubber stamp. Um, I know people use jelly plates. You know, that would be a good, you know, how Jean cut her jelly. If I ever get a big jelly plate, I'm going to be just like Jean and cut that other one down. And you know, like, then you can have a, like, you make your own little one that you could do mirror images on. But, uh, but the way that worked out, you know, even on the other page that we did, where did it, oh my goodness. I'm trying not to have a crafter ranch, which is a daily occurrence for me. Um, like you can't even t other than, other than the, because I stamped on some, a pattern, paint, like a pattern, uh, sewing pattern that Barb, uh, sent me, which is what this line is. I mean, you can't even tell that there's any, anything there. Love it. Coconut oil, milk, coconut oil and milk is good to cook with. Yeah. Coconut oil, my mom is like, my mom likes to preach about coconut oil for everything. She's got books. I don't, I can't tell you how many books she has. Maybe she's watching right now. The other day she was watching me. Um, I, I keep telling her she's got to, got to sign in. Anyway, yeah, coconut oil, whether it's, whether it's for your hair, your skin, cooking, it is, it is good. Okay, so now we're at this point. And it is still a little bit messy, that's for sure. Remember, this is this is scrapbook paper. I don't know if I said that on on uh, camera or yeah. If she's around, I don't know if there's any. She might. Well, she probably won't be on right now because she's cooking. I'm sure. But when I stream during the day, I think she peeks in every once in a while. All right, so green, orange, and purple. I'm trying to figure out how I, how I would want to blend this out now. I, I don't know. It, it seems like now it's too separate from the rest of the page, you know? Well, here, here, regular store socket. But, I mean, I live in a big city, so um, maybe not, maybe not ever. But I'm not going to sit here because I'm struggling on the next step. I'll have to show you. Can you guys hear that? I'll have to show you uh, the finished project a little bit later. But I did have, we'll, we'll still use the same ugly stencils. 
I did have another page in this book that I thought would be perfect. No, not that one. This one. Uh, there's another, and that's what I was explaining before. Sorry, there's that's my neighbors upstairs are making some noise. <laughs> but I'm up above. I'm. I'm. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they can hear me. Hi, Prince. <laughs> I don't know. But. Mm. Oh, Linda, that reminds me. I got I got this here. I might have forgotten it. I'm going to put it right here by my phone. I bring in one of her stamps. So, but what I was saying, because I work in this process of a little bit here, a little bit there, and every time I say a little bit here, a little bit there, I think of Carrie. If you look at Carrie's Twitter, like that's... That's uh, that's on her Twitter thing, or it used to be, maybe not anymore. So it's I have all these pages that are 95% done. Maybe it needs a title, maybe a quote, maybe a couple of, like final layers or whatnot, because that's just how I work, right? Um, and then when I do finishing pages, you know, I'll take a book like this, or go through my stencils, or go through my collage items, and you know, well first I'll go through the mag, the journal, then I'll go through my stuff right and think about jog my memory it'll, it'll help me jog my memory what will go with different pages so for example here on this book again we have some uh, what no Carrie on your Twitter when I say when anytime I say a little bit here a little bit there I'm working a little bit here a little bit there I think of what you have on your twit your Twitter like if you go to your main Twitter and, and where, you know, when you type in, like, I guess my Twitter just says art journal and fitness lover or something like that. I think that's what Carrie has for where she is from or something like that. <laughs> yeah, so it's a spray can. So I thought I really wanted to use this buck or deer or whatever it is, um, but I ripped it. So I have to fix it. But wouldn't this, let, let's see. I ripped the whole stencil. I, I'm now just taking the whole darn thing right from the book rather than trying to fold it. I was trying to fold it and rip it on the perforation. Yeah, that went well. But wouldn't this one be funny? Like, he looks like he's peeking out. Wouldn't he be funny on a page? Like, um, and then have some, not this page, but then have some funny statement like, like he's saying something funny because he looks like he's peeking into something and saying like, what the heck's going on in here? <laughs> you know? oh. oh, did, but you used to have some about a little bit here, a little bit there. Wrapping paper cutter or oh, one of those like, uh, well, I used to call them safety knives. Okay. But then I thought, okay, I have some paint over here, right? Uh, it's house paint and I just you know I was inspired by this magazine image so I just started drawing circles in different colors but I think it kind of goes uh oh I wonder what that was it's bad news but I think it kind of goes so this page has got lots of color so I definitely need to do some stenciling in black or, or in my opinion it needs to be black watch for humans yeah or something like it's just funny Sten this is stencil 101 um stencil uh where did it go oh <laughs> There is a stencil 102. There's a multiple. I actually even saw a new one. Just the other last time I was at Chapters with my mom. And Chapters is like a Barnes and Noble in the States. So they're pretty much, I mean, they're laid out the same way. They got Starbucks in it. But anyway. Yeah, so stencil 101. This is by Ed Roth. And there is another one. There's a couple different stenciling books. Sometimes you find them in the art section, but sometimes you find them in the craft section anytime you go to the bookstore you gotta look at both art and craft because you never know where some someone ha, you know some person that probably doesn't art sticks them right 
And sometimes, like for Sabrina Ward Harrison, you got to go to the self-help section, not even the art section. So, okay. I gotta look at, oh, there's some black right here. I'm just going to use this. No, probably not. One, I don't want my paint. That's a very runny paint. That one's from Dollarama in Canada. It's just a cheap, cheap paint. But I, so I'm going to use craft paint instead. It's a little bit thicker. Sometimes when you have thinner paint, you got to be more careful. And this morning, I don't feel like being so careful. You have one that has a huge bear on it. Yeah, there's more than, more than one. All right. I've got a paint booger there. That's bad news. But just that little, uh, that little bit's probably not enough. Oh, well, let's try it anyways. So this one's too wet. I learned my lesson from the last one, right? Having too much paint on this one. So instead of letting it dry or throwing it out, I'm just going to cut off that top. And now you have, and sometimes I do kind of trim the edges to make it flat. And then I just, then we'll just go on. Strange. Stencils 201. Oh, so it's not 102. It's 101 and 201. Thanks, Ange. All right, same thing. And I think I'm going to make this guy a little bit wonky. So very important, you know, embracing the stencil. Mm -hmm. And I'm going up, straight up and down. So just think, just think of your stencils. I think of my stencils in, in, you know, two categories. I have background stencils, geometric shapes, you know, patterns, stuff like that. And then you got the stencils that are um, definitely more, oh, I like how that little one went kind of inside of it there, but definitely are better for, you know, top layers and focal points. So this is just another composition book. In fact, all of the pages are some, this is probably one of the first books in a long time that where most pages, all pages have at least something on them. Lots of times I'll get a journal and then the, you know, the last 10, 15 pages I've Oh, you can't hear my stomach growling. <laughs> um, sorry. I'll, you know, I kind of, by the time I get down to the last 10 pages or something, I've, I've gotten bored and moved on to something else. But this journal has quite a few. So I do like a little wonky. Just trying to decide where I want the other one. a little bit more paint. Bye Lisa. Yeah, I've got, uh, it's 12. I guess I got about half an hour or so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is deco art and it's, it is a little smelly, but these ones, yeah, these acrylics, I don't know about that. If you, if you're Canadian, you go to Dollarama, I definitely don't suggest the white. They are very, very runny paints. And when I say runny, I mean some like golden fluids. It's great to have a paint that has more viscosity. But yeah, not not with less pigment like those type of paints. Oh, I like that a lot. I think I just need, oh my goodness, my stomach. Did you hear that? <laughs> I better drink some coffee. Drink some coffee, Paula. Mm -hmm. Hope to see you tonight, Lisa. I will definitely be home in time for my stream later tonight. So, And I did post, uh, if you saw on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook, because I have a lot of people that see me on Twitter or on Instagram in particular, that, you know, new people that friends I've met or whatnot that don't know that I do this. So that's why I posted that this morning. Um, 
and you know always appreciate if you like and share always helps those little things really help me out all right two four all right we got five what do you think whoops i'm not even on camera <laughs> so here you now i wouldn't say that this was an ugly stencil but it's an odd stencil right i'm not sure if there's any ugly stencil it's like rubber stamps it, it, there isn't like a really ugly anything it's just you know different people have different tastes but it's definitely a strange stencil like different different is the right i guess different is the right word let's see need some more Oh boy. Bell I can hear Bella barking, but it sounds like Bella's barking outside. Oh my goodness. Just need a little bit more paint on the edges, I think. Oh, I like it. Look how quickly that, that turned out. But see, sometimes I don't... Um, you can do things two ways. You can look at a stencil and say... Okay, how am I going to create a page from start to finish, you know, and and incorporate this? To me, that's way harder, you know, than for me that has a bunch of these kind of pages that are in mid-process. It's much easier for, for me to flip through my, my, uh, my book and say, oh, that one goes on there, right? Again... When I say how I work my process, um, when I post a final piece or a final page, it's gone through some crazy steps and, and it's not very often worked on all at the same time. All right, so I have lots of black left over, but this this is this craft paint dries real fast, so I can I can quickly turn the page on that on that and find something else because I've got lots of black there. So let's let's see on this page. I've got this random leaf there. And there are some weird things, like I said, in, in this book. Like a horseshoe and scissors. There's an owl. That's not too bad. Headphones and turntables. That's pretty much why I chose this book. Like I use this because Simon is very much into Simon has turntables and all that. There's some deer. I don't think any of them go with that, with this page particularly. But I do like this guy. I need to find a, I need to like, I need to find a page for him to, to go on because I want to like write, you know, like, what? Are you talking to me? Or something. Hang something from his antlers. He needs, he needs to live in my book somewhere. Maybe if we start from the beginning, we'll find a spot. Bowel is Halloween. Planet of the Apes. Hey, Janet and Joyceage. I think I messed it a little earlier, but. So you're seeing a flash on that. I'm going to maybe have to tone that guy. Maybe because there's some red in here, maybe I'll have to stipple, add some red to him. So I'm looking for a place to put my deer. Are you talking to me? Weird cow. Sorry, my stomach is... Try not to eat too much. I mean, I ate breakfast, but we're going to be there at 1. And my mom's going to have, you know, like, stuff before we eat. So, But this one... Carrie, was there some show when we were kids, like on, on TVO or something, that had a moose that talked? A moose head that talked? Oh, look at this. This is what my niece did. Not this summer, the summer before. This is Auntie P. <laughs> and then she's got Carrie, squirrel. 
squirrel. <laughs> so she drew that when she was uh, uh, five or six, five. I kind of, I might put them here on the corner and then write, because this is green tea, right? And write something like, you're drinking green tea again. I want to make him look like he's saying something. What kind of pens did you have problems with, Janet? I was always wanting to ask. The page I posted yesterday was red and green. Oh, oh. You could change books. So you just have to think outside the box. Like, what does this remind you of? To me, this reminds me of, like, some moose that used to talk. I don't know what I'm thinking of. White opaque. So, yes, Ange, I do have that page. It might be, maybe it'll go with this one. There's a fish there. This is a big guy, but you don't have to, remember, you don't have to use the whole thing, right? You can hang most of it off the edge, so you're just getting his, like, you know, his chest and a little bit of something else. Let's see. Well, maybe this one. And I can do it this way. Oh, perfect. Thanks, Ange. You made me look at a different book. It may not be the one you're talking about. Did someone say T? Yeah. With the A in it. Rocky and Bullwinkle? Is that? No, I'm not thinking of that. I'm thinking of, in Canada, we have a channel. It's called TV Ontario. And it's very PBS, right? Like one of those paid things and viewer paid, sponsored, run by the government type things. And they, I'm, I don't know why I'm thinking of this moose that talked on the wall. Like Rocky and Bull, like this was a this was a mountain moose head, you know what I mean? But anyway, I wanted to show. I do want to show. I did find. A, I I do like it. So we've got over here. We've got some woods and um, this is a leaf stencil. I know it's hard to see, but it is maple leaves. Leaves maple leaves. And uh, it's a better stenciling, so I'm gonna, I think it'll look perfect on that. But I do want to. Sheesh! I have so many books on the go that I can't find. What book did I do that one in? Hmm. Is it this one? Oh. Oh yeah, I did choose to, to put Fall in Love. Mr. Moose on Captain Kangaroo. I'm going to have to look for it on, on uh, YouTube after. So these are some really old stickers from Sticker Studio. I can't remember now. Paper Lock? Anyway, very, when I say old, if I'm saying something's old, I'm, I mean that it's like 2005 or earlier. Um. Get a talking clock. Captain K. Anyway, so that's what I did. I just used black Sharpie of the brush, Sharpie brush, to do the love. And then I outlined it with uh, one of the General's white, the General's charcoal white pencil. So I might, I need to put, I don't know, it needs a little bit of something else. But this is, a, this is 99% fall into reality yeah but it was funny because when I when I posted that I didn't I I just meant all it needs now is a title I didn't mean that I needed suggestions not that I reminded the suge title suggestions so a after I posted it right away I worked on the title so all of that talk let's just put this guy over here so I'm gonna have one of his antlers or her or no, I guess it's not her. Do female deer have antlers? I don't think so. 
But anyway, I remember a moose talking. Uh, I mean, well, maybe it was the Red Green Show or something like that. Okay, so back to the black over here. I thought it was a kid's show, but maybe, I don't know. It was a long time ago anyway. But I want this deer to say something. Did I tell you that? Oh, and I got to be careful, right? Because I ripped it. Remember I said I ripped it. This <clears throat> I ripped it when I was trying to pull it out of the book. I think I told you guys my dad wants to take me moose hunting. Oh, boy. In Newfoundland, they hunt moose to eat solely. You know, it's I don't think there's anybody that I know of that hunts moose in to, uh, you know, just to put a trophy on their wall. It's literally to eat. But for me, it's just like bugs. Oh, my goodness, bugs, bugs. <laughs> but I guess there won't be any bugs in November. Look at him. Oh, I didn't put him all the way over there, but <laughs> he looked like he's peeking in. I love it. So here you would have thought this is an ugly stencil, but I'm going to have to add a little bit of black over here to make it look like the rest of his body is there. Also, it'll look like he's... But this is why I like to work with this, yeah, moose meat. It's, it's, it's gamey, that's for sure. It's gamey. Like, what would you have ever done with that, you know, or in your head you think, what am I going to do with that? But look at him. Photobomb, exactly what I mean, Carrie. <laughs> he just looks funny to me. And you, like, you talking to me? <laughs> or something like that. I don't know, that's what I see. But now that, excuse my stomach, now that uh, that black is there, I think the background, because right now in the background I have, and like I said, I created this background on with different layers of paint from other projects, uh, you know, like this stencil, obviously it, it didn't come out anywhere near perfect because I used that stencil on somewhere, on a different project, and... Um, well, we need to zoom in one more so you guys can see what I'm doing. I know I went from a bigger book to a smaller book, so I'm just going to click one. Uh, <clears throat> so, you know, like just this leftover paint and, and at one point, I think this page started out, um, started out by me putting that magazine image there. And I just built up on top of it. But now that I look at that, that I added that much black, it needs some more black in the background. And I just happen to have this Stampin' Up! Uh, Maple Leaf stamp here. This is an older stamp from, it says copyright 2002. Alright, so I'm going to go for an archival black, permanent ink. And I'm just creating a little texture in the background. You don't have to do this step, but I like stamps. I enjoy using stamps, and I enjoy what they look like in my artwork. So, like, like we were talking about last night, you, my goodness, I'm going to have to go. My, my stomach is ridiculous. <clears throat> nobody wants to, ain't nobody want to listen to that. And I'll go over here. So like we were saying last night, you just, you have to do what you love. And I happen to love stamps and stencils. <laughs> so to me, that made a huge difference. You may not be able to see it on camera. Seen one on the roof. You haven't seen any? <laughs> All right, so just a little bit of something. Um, yeah, you could either say photo bomb, but I like like are you talking to me? I think that's what I'm gonna put there. And it needs a little bit of contrast. So I'll, for some reason, I mean, well not for some reason, probably the only reason. I keep reaching for this archival ink in vermilion. It's an awesome color for sure. 
all archivings are permanent. Um, but I keep reaching for it, but it, it needs, I think I need to, a little stamp, a little, little something, something, a little something, something in vermilion. Maybe I'll just do, use the itty bitty background. You all, you all know how much I still love and use this stamp. I guess it's come become somewhat of a, you know, it's my work if you see an itty bitty. <laughs> Just doesn't look right to me without those splatters. Now, some pages I have been starting to use more like paint and water to make the to splots, but I do love my itty bitty. Itty bitty. This is an old stamp from Stampin' Up. Um, it says 1997 is the copyright on it. But I think you can still find them around because they were a very pop. Like this was the stamp set, one of the stamp sets you got when you when you became a demo back then, right in the early. So a lot of people have that stamp. You never know. But I just wanted to have a little little touch. Let me see if my camera will pick it up or not. It's just going to give a little touch of something. Maybe if I put my Little touch of something, and now all, really all it needs is a title. Are you talking to me? And I have cut down some strips. Sometimes I don't do it often, um, but sometimes when you have such a busy background, I will map my title or put it on a tag or something different. But so that makes me happy. I got some black paint over here left though. It's pretty much dry. So let's see how I can use it on a different page or something else on a different page. So this this is from a magazine. They're like coat hangers or something. Mm, there's that guy. There's some there's a few hot messes in this journal I need to uh, work out. That was this girl, but she's not. <clears throat> Let us see what we can do. Yeah, it's really strange how the chat works sometimes. It is like a Halloween owl. Oh my goodness, Simon, what is he listening to? There's also stencils that can be more challenging. I mean, really, it's all personal preference, whether a stencil is attractive to you or not. Uh, just like I say about my art, what I think may be the... Um... Oh, is Jeannie still here? That Compass Rose stencil, Jeannie, kind of goes with this set. Carrie, you know that um, this this set from uh, Tattered Angels, and you have the Compass Rose, and I use it. Well, I have it too. I kind of use it all the time. Do you have a matching set to it? We have a compass row stamp that's huge. Yeah, there's one that, that matches the stencil I always, the mask I always, or we always use. I don't think I have the stamp set. I would have to see it. See, to me, these are ugly stencils, right? These are Halloween, cheap Halloween ones. Um, 
Like, really. But hey, these worms were at the Dollarama. So I couldn't, I can't complain too much for that. You just have to think about them differently, that's all. I guess all of my older ones I put somewhere else. I don't know if Jeannie had any any luck finding it like on uh, there you got a six by six compass rose from eye stencils. Bye Dana. What I find challenging is using Tim Holtz stencils because they're made when you're you when you're doing a background and such in your art journal, maybe I should use it now. Um, like these are made for tags, right? Not really for anything bigger than that. I mean, in Tim's mind, that's how he designs them. But you get that crazy border, and uh... all right. So to me, a stencil like this is challenging. Or what I would consider ugly. <clears throat> but you've seen the one one technique in in stenciling is to stencil. Now I gotta be careful because this has a little hanger thing here, which is not part of the design. Oh, why did I do black? Probably because it was here. But a way to, to practice Zen tangling is to uh, stencil first. I first saw this on Stencil Girl. You know, one thing was kind of funny because I have ideas, take notes all the time, write them down. And uh, sometimes when you have ideas and you don't release them into the world, other people pick them up. Does that make sense? So anyways, I forget who on Stencil Girl. Um, it was one of the, the gentlemen that is doing Zen tangling inside stencils. So you don't have to start with a pre-handed, you know, a pre-handed design. Now I wouldn't start with black and then, <laughs> well, unless you had a white pen that worked, which, you know, that's a challenge for me. All right, go on to the next. This one I'm just going to use as a little design, I think. But that's how you got to use your stencils. You just have to challenge yourself. That's a weird page. Well, when you get something weird like this going on, sometimes it's better. It's best to just add something weird on top of it. See where it goes. But you know my theory. I believe in using what's around you. A little bit of black paint sure does go a long way. So see how I'm working? I got leftover paint. I chose a stencil like this, and now I'm randomly opening. I shouldn't say randomly because I am choosing, but I'm I'm choosing a journal that's close to me, and just adding layers. Linda. I don't know if you guys are talking to me or what. <clears throat> I 
Let's see. Oh, over here, there's too much white. This is a stencil girl, or sorry, excuse me, artist seller. And when I say seller, I don't mean S-E-L-L, -L, like selling something. It's seller like basement, C-E-L-L-A-R. Um, but it, it's, it's a, a set that ha has water-looking stencils, and this one kind of coral-looking. I really do like that one. So you wouldn't think that this weird um, random swirly stencil would necessarily go with um, a stencil that's designed to look like coral, but hey, to me, it looks like it's some waves or something going through it. I don't know. I like it. Now I just need, I should have started from the middle and go out. Thanks, Carrie. And guys, I, I know I, I may sound funny saying it, but if you do, if I do inspire you to uh, do some shopping at one of these, some of these places, I do appreciate just putting the comments, hey, Journal Artista sent me, something like that. It does help me out. I appreciate it. All right, so something, oh, that turned out weird over there. But look at how that dramatically changed this background from a background that I cringed at every time I passed by it in this book to something that now, ooh, now I can do something with. I like it. So I've got all this mess done with your nap. It really perked up the page and it's you know you, you can't give up you just have to flip you know so I've got lots of sprays going on here as you can see and then I decided to put I don't know gesso over it and then I thought I had the same thing right I had extra black paint and I was using that letter stencil so I did it over here but now it's like pastelli harsh black I have to reel that one back in sometime but Let's see, we have a Julie Faith and Balzer stencil going on there. Maybe we could find, maybe I will do this Planet of the Apes guy. Ginormous right there, why not? This kind of reminds me, that, that, that stencil kind of reminds me, kind of tribal. Made you some cheap stamps. I do appreciate everybody being here. This little impromptu. I like I said, I'm just so excited to go. And I'm all dressed and ready. I thought that rather than sitting there wasting time watching TV, I jump on for a little bit. But don't forget that I will be back at 9 p.m. Eastern. <clears throat> all right, this crazy guy. I'm going to have him peeking out, peeking out. And I really like what it's, you know, what the black is doing. So I am going to go back to use some black. I will have to wash my hands out before I go, I suppose, really well. All right, so you gotta be care again. With any stencil, you have to be careful if you're, you know, when you're doing your pouncing. But uh, especially when it's like when it's paper, plastic covered paper like this one. Just if you see something like ugly or or something weird, think about how it applies to your life. You know. What does it make you think of? I'm not sure what this crazy... I'm not even sure if it's an ape. I'm not sure what type of primate it is, but... But he might be looking at something. 
<laughs> but it'll be fun to use. Let's see what I'll do with this guy. Let's go back to this one. Hey Dixie, it's a chimpanzee from, you think it's Planet of the Apes for sure? So see this page, I'm still struggling with this one. I added this stencil and because this one, you know, I had a spot down here and, uh, you know, but the purple didn't turn out right because I was using cheaper craft paint and so I really have to work on this bad boy. I think I'm going to have to add some cream or white to rein it back in, but not at this time. Oh, and then this I was doing last night while I was watching Carrie. I don't know what I was thinking. I knew better. I knew better. So obviously I had some beautiful spray over here, right? Um, <clears throat> that was from, you know, using this stencil in a different art journal, spraying, and then leaving the stencil overnight a long time, right? That's how you get the really good image. But then I thought, smart, you know, I thought, oh, I'm going to use this flower stencil. So this flower stencil is a, a Julie Faye Van Balzer stencil from Crafters Workshop. But I thought, oh, I'm going to do it over there. But I knew it was going to come through, but I didn't know it was going to come through so much that now you lose, when I say come through, I mean the Dilutions ink, spray ink, that now you can't even tell what it is. You know what I mean? So I'm really going to have to work on this. Like, let's see. Here's some Mindy Stamp Gang colors. We have some orangish red, some blues. So because that's kind of orange over there, I'll use a... This is a uh, Mindy Stamp Gang spray. It's a mica spray. Starburst spray, excuse me. Does it have a name? Autumn Maple Crimson. So I'm going to try to hold it up because, so this is light molding paste. I don't know if I said that. This is light molding paste through, through this, uh, flower stencil. So anyways, I'm going to hold it up. Hopefully you guys can see, you do have to shake it because there is mica powder in the mixed into these sprays. All right. And I'm just going to try to spray at the top here and let it drip down. And hopefully it'll drip down nicely over the flowers. I'm going to let it drip on my mat, nonstick mat here. A little bit more. You can add water to this process too. And if you, if you add water, you know, you're going to get a, it's going to, it's going to make the sprays lighter, right? So I'm just trying to, let's see. Now you can see what's going on. All right. Sometimes when it when it pools, if I'm doing this technique and it pools, I like to move it around. So I'll tilt it the wrong way again. Right. So see, you now the mo ink's moving back that way, and it'll go back again this way. Sometimes it creates new paths, but it also um, just pools differently, makes it richer. Right. So I'll make a little new path there, and I'll go back this way. See how it's moving. So you're going to start seeing um, a lots of browns, even though this is more of a red spray, because now it's going to start mixing with that blue Dilutions. No, I'm not sure if it was Dilutions or if it was an Adirondack, this uh, sailboat blue Adirondack. All right, I'm going to let that dry. But what's fun is that light molding paste, it kind of absorbs some of it. Right, it'll pool around it. The mica will will pool around it. Um, yeah, alcohol inks are great. Barb just used them yesterday. Actually, made some gorgeous leaves. I haven't used them in a long time. I do have a little bit of spray there. Let's see. We'll get the bit on. 
What can I put it on? I don't use them often enough, that is for sure. Not that book. There's no no blank space on that one. What is this? Oh. Here's an Eiffel Tower that when I did my heat embossing yesterday to test because I have uh sorry, that's not I'm gonna spray this with water. I bought like this huge jar from Ranger of gold detail and I thought, oh no, it's like 15 years old. Is it going to uh, be old? Like it's so much, right? I watered that down so much that there's not much pigment left in there. But... But anyways, I'm just picking that up. There might not even be anything nice afterwards. Now I forgot what I was saying. Gotta love that. Oh, I was talking about uh, alcohol inks. You know, I've had alcohol, and, and Barb was right. Alcohol inks last forever. Another Ranger product. I uh, took a class with Tim Holtz. I don't know if it was 2002. At a club's, oh no, it'll tell me here. At a club scrap retreat, 2004, this one was at. So we did that. But we've, over the years, I've done lots of different, one of these books, I don't want to cause an avalanche because that went bad. That went south really quickly last time. I do have that one art journal, not that one. We also, so I took the same technique that we I learned in 2004 with Tim. Um, and did the same relief. Uh, it's not going to go. But let me tell you, it didn't hold up very well now that I look at it. But it looks grungy still. So anyways, I definitely don't use them enough. But I should. I did want to ask Carrie something quick if she's still paying attention. I sent you this one already, right? But not this one. I've got lots of napkins that I haven't sent, but I want to know. Although Carrie will probably say, send the whole pack. I need more. <laughs> but I do have this one too. And there's 40 in this one. It looks like this. I, yeah, and I always get them at at Home Goods or or uh, Winners, which to you guys is what TJ Maxx, like one of those type of stores. Home Sense, Home Goods. I always forget which one it is in Canada. Home Sense in Canada, Home Goods in the U.S. That's where I get all these fancy ones because you know in real life, in real life, regular price like this package would be eight or nine dollars, right? So I, whenever I'm over there, I just kind of try to score some of those. But I wanted to ask because I gotta send Carrie's thing out. But anyways, guys, it's almost time for me to go have some dinner. I appreciate it was fun spending some time. Uh, just before I go, and uh, <laughs> he's fainted. There's so many nice ones. Look at this. It says magnificent and it's got writing on it. Um, it's made by Cypress Hill. Kind of 
cocktail napkin, or Cypress Home, I should say. Doesn't say who the uh, artist is, though. I, I, I will try to uh, abstain from any party beverages. <laughs> But this is a nice one. I don't know who the artist is. But that's nice. Anyways, guys, I'll take off. Should be back around. Let's count. I should. I will be back around 9 to see you guys. Hey, Jen. Sorry, I'm just about taking off. I truly appreciate everybody. Good to see some new people. And uh, if you don't already know or follow me on YouTube, go check me out over there at Journal Artista. And I will see you guys tonight in let's see it's 12 30 just so everybody knows eight hours eight and a half hours bye guys oh probably having a turkey nap